Hi everybody, Ollie here, aka Secret Imbus here, another episode of Magic Jewels. So for today's episode, what we're going to be running is a blue and red control mill deck. Now, originally I was going to do a uh, blue-red prowess deck, but I think with the kind of the whole problem with the priority system at the moment is really putting me off playing that deck, mostly because it makes um What's it called? Um, Abbot of Carol Keep, almost completely useless. And I mean almost completely useless. So uh, I was playtesting the deck and so many times I was literally just hammering spacebar, trying to get the camp trying to get the sorry, the timer to pause, and it just was not doing it. And unless you have some other way of kind of kind of keeping the timer paused, uh, it makes that card very, very useless, and it makes some of the plays very, very useless as well. And it just wasn't as consistent as I'd like. So I might come back to it if they ever decide to fix the priority system, although that's not looking like it's going to happen until at least Eldritch Moon. And by that time, there's probably going to be other decks that I want to play anyway. I may come back to it, I may play test it again, see how it goes, but for now, I'm going to put that to one side. But let's talk about today's deck. So like I said, it's a control mill deck. To start off with, we've got three copies of Fiery Impulse, so some nice early game uh, removal. Um, so this is a particularly good against, especially against all the human aggro decks out there. You know, the two damage or three damage if you've got the uh, spell mastery is very good at picking off those small creatures. Then we've got Jace, Vrin's Prodigy. So that he's here to help us uh, draw and discard cards and then potentially flip him to Jace Telepath Unbound to start controlling the board by giving creatures minus two zero. Um, putting instant or sorcery cards back from our graveyard and then potentially acting as a mill uh, condition later on as well. Got four copies of Alchemist File. Uh, basically, this is in here to give us the card draw on turn two. So, if we're ready on two mana, we can drop this on turn two, hopefully, find that third mana. Also, later on, it's good for blocking big creatures that we don't want swinging at our face to kind of like keep us in the game out a little bit longer. Horrible, horrible Arise in here. Uh, didn't really see much use before, as most people were playing uh, kind of huge creatures back in Battle for Zendikar. But now we've obviously got. Uh, uh, what's I'm looking for? Oath of the Gate Watch and Shadows of Rinnestrad. There's a lot more smaller creatures out there. So suddenly this card is a lot more important. So uh, counter target creature with spell with converted mana cost four or less. That's basically every single card in a uh, human deck. Like almost every single card is converted mana cost four or less. Like one of the few cards that isn't like four or less would probably be Avacyn. And even then, is Avacyn a four mana cost card? I don't know. I, I, I want to find that out now. Let's have a quick check on that. So, um, Avacyn is 5 mana, so yeah, Avacyn wouldn't be countered, but it would be one of the few cards that isn't countered by a Horrible Array in a kind of a blue, white, or green human type deck. We've got three copies of Telling Time, so a nice two mana Sift card, so we can use it to draw one card, uh, put one card on top of our library and one on the bottom of our library, so this is good for kind of digging out uh, Sphinx's tutelages, uh, burn, stuff like that. I've put in one copy of Rolling Thunder, I didn't have this in up until the last minute and it was kind of a last minute decision to drop this card in, and it's basically there as a kind of a late game bomb, so if we're kind of like struggling late game and we've kind of drawn the game out, we've got a lot of mana on the board, this is quite good for either kind of taking in the last little bit of health from our opponent, or potentially getting rid of a big troublesome creature. Uh, we've got uh, two copies of, or the two copies available of Jury N Ruin Diver, so a three mana, one red, one blue. Um, so when this is on the board, it's a 2-3 two, two, body, one of the few creatures in our deck, uh, but whenever we play a second spell on our turn, we get to draw a card, so good for triggering Sphinx's tutelage and just kind of like uh, fishing for cards that we might want late game. Of course, in a uh, in a mill in a mill, any deck where we want mill, we have obviously got to include Sphinx's tutelage in this version of the game. So, so you've seen this, guys. You've seen this before, guys. Three mana mill card. Wherever we draw a card, our opponent puts the top two cards of his or her library into his or her graveyard. Uh, and if they're the both if they're both the same color and aren't lands, then we get to repeat the process, which is quite nice. Uh, Fevered Visions is one of the MVPs of this deck, so this and Sphinx's Tutelage, if you can get one or two copies of each of these down, it's pretty much game over. I had a pretty funny match when I was uh, playtesting this, I basically had all three copies of Sphinx's Tutelage down and my opponent had actually played their own copy of Fevered, Fevered Visions, and basically they realised that them playing out of Fevered Visions was actually helping me as I was essentially milling them three times a turn and they just rage quit the moment I dropped the, uh, the third Tutelage, it was quite funny. But yeah, Fevered Visions, so at the beginning of each player's end step, that player draws a card, so again, it's brilliant for, you know, triggering Sphinx's Tutelage twice in our turn, so once when we draw a card at the beginning of our turn, once at the end of our turn, uh, our opponent does also get to draw a card, but if they've got four or more cards in hand, Fevered Visions deals two damage to them, so 
This is actually another win con. Play this on turn three. Um, you basically, that your opponent has 10 turns to kind of like uh, play out all of their hand. If not, if they kind of keep too many cards in hand, they basically start taking damage. So it's a nice kind of like uh, secondary win con to like, kind of like start pointing damage at your opponent's face and kind of forcing them to play out cards, which, way, which they might not want to play out couple of copies of Scatter to the Wind, so a nice three mana counter spell where late game we can also awaken and turn uh, a land into uh, a 3-3 three, three creature. Radiant Flames only does two damage across the board in a two, uh, two color deck but it's still a nice sweeper especially against humans. Again most humans on their own only have one or two health so you know we can sweep kind of like humans off the board using Radiant Flames which is you know quite nice. Exquisite Firecraft, so a nice uh, three mana, four damage burn spell. Also uncounterable with spell mastery. Uh, we've also got two copies of Touch of the Void to essentially give us uh, kind of a pseudo four copies of Exquisite Firecraft as it does, you know, three out of the four damage, so it's not bad. Um, it's not uncounterable, but it does have the ability to exile a creature if you kill it. Uh, can also point uh, both these, you can actually point them at your opponent's face, so they're, they're also used as late game burn to the face spells as well. A couple of copies of Comparative Analysis, so uh, a 4 mana draw 2 cards, so similar to Inspiration, but we can potentially pair it out as a 3 mana if we pay it Surge Cost, which is quite nice, which is why it's in here rather than the Inspiration, as it's just got that kind of that superior ability with the Surge. A couple of copies of Confirmed Suspicions, so a 5 mana counter spell, doesn't sound particularly great, but the ability to do investigate 3 times and then potentially draw a uh, trigger Sphinxy Tutelage more times is quite nice. And then in terms of our late game drops, we've got Jason Raveler of Secrets, so a 5 mana Planeswalker, which allows us to scry one then draw a card. Uh, we've got return target creature to its owner's hand, so we can bounce creatures back. And then we've also got an emblem, where if we get it to minus 8, uh, we can get, basically give our opponent an emblem where they, the first uh, spell that they, count, that they play every turn is countered, which is quite nice. So a pretty uh, kind of troll uh, emblem which you can put on your opponent's side of the battlefield. And then uh, very, very late game, we've got Chandra, so a six mana Planeswalker, so we've got her ability to swing for six damage every turn if we want to. Uh, so this is, uh, again, another win con. Uh, late game, if we've managed to control the board quite a bit, keep, keep the creature numbers down, we can then start swinging for six damage every turn, which is quite nice. We've also got the ability to discard all the cards in our hand and then redraw that many cards, plus one, so pretty crazy. So because it's got the draw on it, that basically means that we actually then would trigger Sphinx's tutelage depending on the number of cards in our hand which could you know late game um, finish off or completely mill out our opponent plus it's also quite a nice late game uh, sweeper so we can play it down and then sweep the board for at least four damage if we're in a bit of hot bother in terms of the mana base we've got ten islands we've got eight mountains two sulfur falls and four highland lakes so that's the deck let's go play some games Okay guys, here we are for game number one. We're playing the rank 30 Jacob Snellman, I believe that was. I might double check that. Uh, so yeah, this is actually quite a nice opening hand. We've got Jace, we've got Alchemist Vile, and we've got Touch of the Void to basically take down any kind of early game aggro. So yeah, we're playing Jacob Snellman. So we'll start off with the Highland Lake for obvious reasons. That is a uh, completely tapped mana. I mean, Sulfur Falls we can play out untapped with our island or mountain. So I'm thinking we either go for Jace or we go for Telling Time this turn. Um, probably go for, go for Telling Time because we obviously want to get out Sphinx's so Tutelage as fast as possible. So if it's kind of like three cards deep, we can probably find it this turn. So we'll play out that mountain. We've got Fevered Visions for next turn anyway. So even if we don't find a uh, Sphinx's Tutelage, we do have this instead as one of our early game three drop enchantments. So we will be playing Telling Time uh, this turn. We're just going to wait until his, his end step. See what he does. Could be obviously going to be swinging for one here. We've got nothing on the board, so we're going to Telling Time now. Um, okay, interesting choices. I'm going to grab the Scatter to the Winds, and then I'm also going to grab Jace. Uh, reason being is that we're more likely to be able to play Jace than we are Chandra. Having or having four mana, you know. It, it, I'm thinking long term here. Okay, so he's played out Nissa, so I'm almost thinking just touch of the void Nissa instead of playing out Fever Divisions. Um, okay, we'll play out the Sulfur Falls here. Now, tough choice. Like I said, touch of the void or Fever Divisions. 
I'm thinking long term here, so I'm going to go for the Fevered Visions. Uh, I don't think he's going to be able, he's not going to be able to fit Nissa at least for two more turns. Because even if he plays out something like an Explosive Vegetation, I don't think that's going to put him on enough mana to actually kind of uh, flipper. No, he's nowhere near. So Nissa will get Touch of the Void um, this upcoming turn. Okay, so we've got a Rex Age, so yep, Touch of the Void may have been better there, so he's just going to outright destroy our Fevered Visions. Um, so that's an interesting choice, so at least he's got rid of that, and we know he's got rid of at least one Rex Age in his deck, so like potentially an upcoming Sphinx's Tutelage could um, be a little bit safer. Really do with okay, thank you, very, thank you for that. We do have another Fevered Visions here, so I'm actually just going to touch the Void Nissa this turn and probably play out Fevered Visions next turn. So we're going to take three damage this turn, so we're going to drop down to 13. Okay, we've got uh, Outland Colossus, so in hindsight. <laughs> We could almost do with a Jace here to bounce back. Yeah, that doesn't really work for me just because of the fact that I don't think I've really got any way of taking this out. It would have been nice if I counter that, but obviously I wanted to get rid of Nyssa. But I didn't know he was obviously just going to then drop a Outland Colossus. So, got some choices this turn. I can drop Alchemist Vial and stop it from swinging at my face. I can play Jace out and then potentially bounce it back. Uh, I think we're going to play out Alchemist File here. Which we will draw as a card. Um, and then maybe just block Outland Colossus coming at our face, maybe? This is, uh, this is a tough one, because I think we're basically in a bit of bother here, just to the fact that... Um, yeah, we... we we're, We've not found what we wanted, like our Sphinx's tutor just not come online as fast as possible. He's come out fairly aggressive against us. So I'm fairly sure we can survive this time. We do have a Rolling Thunder. Now, we don't really have enough to actually kill Outland Colossus, so... I almost just want to find a Sweeper and just hopefully prevent this swinging at our face next turn. So, I mean, we're going to take 10... No, sorry, 9 damage here. Go down to... 4. See, to be fair, he could have his own Rolling Thunder here and we could just be dead, or a... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, Chandra's Ignition also kills me, so yep, game over, never mind. Let's move on to game number two. Okay guys, here we are for game number two, we're playing the rank 31 Gomac. Okay, so what have we got here then? Okay, this is actually quite a nice opening hand, so yeah, I think we'll keep this. Drop the Highland Lake, turn one. Uh, we'll go for Alchemist Vile, turn two. Uh, Jory N, Ruin Diver, turn three, maybe. Okay, so he's got off to a slow start, which is nice. So we've got green and white here. So do I play Alchemist Vile? I think I do. You know, I'm looking for Sphinx's Tutelage as fast as possible. Um, if he plays out a small creature, we obviously won't be able to horrible right this turn, but we will be able to burn it down instead. So next time we will be able to both Fiery Impulse and Horrible Right on his turn. So I'm expecting maybe, yep, something like a Top and Free Blade. I was expecting that. So we will be Fiery Impulsing that just straight down. Then holding open Horrible Array to, um, what's what I'm looking for? Uh, counter the next creature. So yeah, we're just going to Fiery Impulse you. So we've got Horrible Array here to counter the next creature he tries to play. We've also got Scattered to the Winds after that, so that I don't really care about countering. Uh, that one, however, might be worth it. Yeah, I think I'm going to counter you. Okay, so we can either hold open Scatter to the Winds, or we can play a Jury and River Diver, which I think we need to, you know, get something on the board. Get a Presence, get a Blocker for the uh, Expedition Envoy. I'm assuming he's going to play, you know, something like um, Bygone Bishop, maybe, or maybe expecting one of his other two drops. I'm going to block this, because I've got a second one in my hand, so I don't really care about. Okay, so he's going to Primal Bellow. That's going to go up to a 4-3. Was expecting that, you know. Was expecting some kind of uh, uh, combat trick there. 
Okay, so we do actually have, so what I'm thinking doing this turn is Jury and River Diver and then just Fury Impulsing that down. Which will mean that we draw a card. So I'm, like I said, I'm looking for that tutelage at some point, which we have not found yet. So God, like I play test this deck, everything comes out perfect. Like getting fire, we're getting uh, fire, uh, what's I'm looking for? Tutelages, uh, fevered visions, all sorts of fun stuff. The moment I actually come to play the, you know, play it, play it on camera, that's when everything starts to go wrong. Okay, here we go. So we have fevered visions is coming down, and we actually still have enough mana open here to play that the scatter to the winds, which is quite nice. So, so uh, do we attack here? Yeah, why not? Yeah, I think we can attack. This, this is obviously not going to flip over, so I don't really. It's only going to do maximum of two damage. So at least we've got our card draw mechanic in the uh, Fevered Visions online. So we do have a Scatter to the Winds to potentially counter anything we don't like him playing. Like, oops, a daisy, Dust Watch Recruiter. Because obviously that's going to allow him to start finding smaller creatures, and we don't want him doing that. We do have a counter with the Confirmed Suspicions open. So we are going to take two damage, but I'm not really too fussed by that. He will take two more damage there. Thank you very much to the Fevered Visions. Do have a second Fevered Visions online, so we will be playing you out. We should go allow us to draw two cards every turn. Go allow him to draw two cards every turn, but it will mean he's losing four health every turn rather than two, so uh, there is that. Okay, so like I said, we're going to draw two cards here. We're going to find a Horrible Rai. Good, we've got a counter. And we've got a Radiant Flame. So everything is actually coming up Ollie right now in this game against the kind of the aggro-ish white green human deck. Okay, so we're going to Horrible Rai you. Which basically means he would be able to get five mana down there, but we're going to stop him from doing that. So like I said, this will give him two cards every turn, but it will drop him down to 10 health here. So he's basically on a three or four turn counter. So he's got three turns left until he's just dead. That's actually, no, that, that, that's a lie. I, I lied about that. He's only got two turns left until he's dead because I'm about to deal two damage to his face here. We do have the confirmed suspicions, so we can potentially counter something we don't like next turn, maybe like an Avacyn or something like that. Okay, so I said we're going to draw two cards here, so we've got another mana, and we've got, oh, finally, we've got a tutelage, you know, finally turned up. Nice of you to show up, tutelage. Ah, that is actually going to flip this turn, so that's a bit more of a problem, because I didn't actually play anything out next last turn, so I'm almost tempted to alchemist vile that. It's only going to cost me one mana. I'm actually saying I've got Radiant Flame, so I'm not really too bothered by that. So I'm just going to Radiant Flame's next turn instead, which will wipe out his uh, Consul's Lieutenant as well. So we'll take four damage here, going out to 12, but I will be wiping both of these out. Because we only do two damage with Radiant Flames, as we're only running two colours. So he's down to four health here. And he's got discard cards, because, you know, we've been forcing him to draw that many. So I did get rid of a Kythian's tactics, so this Radiant Flames here, and he's been replaced by the AI, so it looks like he's just disconnected himself. What we got here then? Might of the masses, so we're just gonna confirm suspicions you. And we do get a second Sphinx's tutelage. It's, it's kind of a bit of a, a bit irrelevant at this point, the Sphinx's tutelage, is we have actually won by one of our alternative win conditions, which is the double um, fever visions. go so basically we draw two more cards touch of the void and a comparative analysis so I said at this point unless he can do 12 points of burst damage which I don't think he should be able to there's no kind of like haste creatures and then we just win excellent let's move on to game number three okay guys here we are for game number three we're playing the rank 27 three squares it's almost like people like doing barcodes in, um, I'm actually going to keep this hand. It seems a bit silly, but I've got the double alchemist vials, so I'm hoping to draw into a blue mana within the next two turns. Just to get, so just so we can actually, you know, get Sphinx's tutelage down. So yeah, I think it's just kind of like people trying to do like the barcode thing that they do in StarCraft. So nothing yet, so we're going to alchemist vial here. Fingers crossed we get that blue mana. Come on, Lady Luck. There we go. 
Luck be a lady tonight, as Frank Sinatra would say. I believe that was Frank Sinatra. Don't quote me on that, guys. Luck be a lady tonight. Okay, so we looks like we might be playing Super Friends if we've got Oath of Nissa down. Uh, we've got green and black so far, though. So, okay, green, black, and red. So, could just be like a ramp deck of some description. So, we're going to start raining on his parade with the uh, with the tutelage. Oh, yes, we have our double win con down. So, we've got Sphinx's tutelage and the Fevered Visions. So, the only thing I'm really worried about now would be a Re Rex Age. That would really kind of, you know, rain on my parade. See, we've still got three colours here. So, yeah, I think next turn we will obviously want to go for the Fevered Vision. Which obviously allows us to start milling twice a turn with the uh, tutelage. So, yeah, the only thing, like I said, the only thing I'm worried about now would be a Rex Age. But, uh, don't know what he's running, though. Do some burn. Got the Jorien Ruin Diver for the, uh, what's what I'm looking for? For the card, for the additional card draw later on. So he did decide to draw an additional card there. Hope you got something good, mate. Because the mill is about to go into overdrive. So yeah, we're going to go for the Fevered Visions here. So these these two cards in tandem are ridiculous. So yeah, this is uh, Shadows of Rinnestrad. This, again, this deck is kind of one of those... Um, it's quite a... Uh, set spanning deck, so this really does encompass all four decks. We've got a lot of Origins cards, got some from the deck box, we've got some from Oath of the Gatewatch, Shadows over Innistrad, uh, Battle for Sender card, like I said, it's just got a bit of everything, really. Yeah, you, you keep ramping up. It's basically just helping me out by milling you down faster. Like, the more cards you take out of your deck, the faster you lose, essentially. So, if we get a fifth mana, so yeah, he takes two damage there, draws an additional card. Okay, so we're just going to mill him down again. Do we get a mana, fifth mana? No, we do not. I was hoping for Jurion Ruin Diver and a uh, play out the Alchemist File, but I think we'll just play out Alchemist File this turn. There we go. We actually got fifth mana now, which is quite nice. So we'll burn you down. So what do we do here then? Um, I mean, I could Fiery Impulse you. Or I could play out my Jewelry and Ruin Diver. I like the idea of that, because next time we could potentially Fiery Impulse and Telling Time, or Fiery Impulse and Touch of the Void, something like that. So we go Fevered Visions here, draw ourselves an additional card. We get Horrible Rai, which is going to be less useful against a ramp deck. So we've got rid of Kalatas here. Pulse of Morasso is quite nice to get rid of as it gets him life back. Radiant Flames, Fall of the Titans. Okay, so we've got a Woodland Bellower here. So, I can actually kill him with a Touch of the Void and a Fiery Impulse, but I'm assuming he's going to grab a Rex Age and destroy our Sphinx's tutelage. So, uh, it's not the end of the world, and he's going to Fiery Impulse down our Jurion River Diver, which is annoying, because I would have liked to have got the additional card draw from playing out a Fiery Impulse and the Touch of the Void. So, he will draw a card, take some damage. Okay, so we've got some more mana here, so... Can I play all of these out? No, I can't quite play out. Um, Jury on River... Jury on River... Ruin Diver, not River Diver, it's Ruin Diver. My god, I'm doing it again, guys, I'm sorry. So I think we're just going to touch... Nope, cancel that. We want to Fiery Impulse first. Reason being is that this will exile instead of going to the graveyard. Then get rid of you, and then we can Telling Time on our off step, or Horrible Ride, depending on what he plays. So we're looking for another Sphinx's Tutors at this point. So that was that was one of the. This is one of the few cards that this deck really does fear is the uh, Rex Age. So he's going to read the bones. That's fine. So he's going to draw some cards. So we did most of mill him a little bit. Got rid of a Kalatas. So what we're looking for now is a second uh, Tutelage to find. To so, you know, start milling him down again. And he is going to get that hiss hissing quagmire down, so he's going to do an additional two points of damage to our face. So I think at this point we're just going to uh, telling time. So we'll grab the Jace, we'll grab the Touch of the Void. Do take a little bit of damage there, it's fine. And then he loses two life to the Fevered Visions.
Okay, so he had to get rid of a fiery impulse there. So we'll play out the sulfur fools here. I think we'll play out you. We'll then play out Jace and then see what we find. Okay, we've got a confirmed suspicions. It could be useful later on. When he, you know, potentially plays out some of his big creatures. So we're knocking down by two health again. Ooh, why didn't he not lose health? Um if the player is your opponent and has four or more cards in hand, why did he not do two damage? That is really weird. I'm a little bit confused. Why did he not take two damage from him? He, he clearly has more than four cards in hand. That's really odd. I'm a little bit I'm a little bit confused now. Why he didn't Oh, it's my end step, isn't it? What am I on about? Is he about to lose two health this turn? My god. I went full retard there for a second. It's like, why did he lose two health? It's like, yeah, because it was my end step, not his end step. So uh, now he's going to lose two health. So we've basically got him getting down to three. Okay, we've got another Fevered Visions here, which is actually kind of hilarious. We do have these Scattered to the Winds to counter anything we want here. So he's dead in a couple of turns at this point. So we can counter any big creatures that he plays this turn with the Scattered to the Winds. We draw two cards, thanks to the, uh, oh yes, we've got a Rolling Thunder as well. Fantastic. So he's basically dead next turn, I think. So Nissa, don't care. That's not something that's going to threaten my face anytime soon. This is basically for something like Omnath Locus of Rage. So that's why I'm glad I had the uh, Scatter to the Winds open there. That is not something I wanted to see. So I said, there are multiple win conditions for this deck. We've done it. A, we've done it a couple of times with Fevered Visions. Uh, we almost did it with the Mill here. So I wonder why it decided to give me the op. Oh, because I can point it at Nissa, can't I? But I'd rather just point at his face at this point because he's about to die. Now, do we have enough here with Rolling Thunder? We've got one, two, three, four, five. Um, that's not quite enough, I don't think. So I could touch of the void, and then would that leave open enough mana to counter with? No, it would not. So if he, for example, were to play out a big creature, which could, say for example, if he were to play out like Ulamog, that would destroy both of my fevered visions, but... So I'm going to grab a couple of, uh, draw a couple of cards here. We will have to, um... oh no, we're about to toss any, we've got a full hand. So we've got one confirmed suspicions for a big creature. And he's got a From Beyond, so he's going to basically sack that up for... So we're going to counter you with the Confirmed Suspicions, thank you very much. We don't want you gaining that 7 life, and that's basically now game over. So that's, basically that's what he was waiting for, and we've just gone and won, so uh, awesome. So yeah, he takes 4 damage. Again, we could have pointed that at Nyssa, but it's fine. So is it... Um, deals 2 damage, so... It, I, 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 I'm a little bit confused as to why that. So, so let, me, let me read that. So, if the opponent, if your player is your opponent, has four or more cards in hand, Fever Vision deals two damage to him or her. So, I don't see why that card can deal two damage to Nissa, but whatever. We'll just finish this off with the uh, Touch of the Void. Excellent. So, uh, a couple of really good games there. Um, first one obviously just didn't go to plan. We. We just didn't get the cards we wanted. He just aggroed us down a little bit faster than we would have liked. But the last two games just essentially went completely to plan there, which is fantastic. So, uh, yeah, that is my uh, blue-red mill control deck. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, but that is the end of the episode for now. As always, guys, don't forget to comment and like if you enjoyed the episode. And I'll see you next time. Goodbye.